Hi, welcome to episode 110 of Yarnivore. We have one week till the wedding. One week. Which means you get me this week, you won't get me next week, the week after that you'll get me, and then the shop opens like two days, three days later, depending on when you watch this. So, what have I been up to? I've been busy. If you've ever planned a wedding, you know what I mean. Even if you haven't planned a wedding, I'm sure you have an idea of how insane it gets. Insane. Run off my butt. Run. Run right off. So. Let's just jump right in. I'm sure there will be rambling. It will be intermit. Intermixed. Intermit. Intermittent. Intermittently intermixed with the entirety of the show. So first off. I know you're all dying to know. The cupcakes did get finished. I can't show you all the cupcakes because they're in these. These are the little goodie bags that everyone's getting. Everyone who travels near and far gets a little goodie bag. Um, Dawn from Wolf Farms was super awesome and uh, did up a special little cover for the the lotions. We picked the pumpkin spice lotion, which, by the way, will make you want to eat yourself. Kind of bad. And then everybody gets a little soap sampler and a lip balm, plus the little cupcakes. So they're all done, they're all bagged, and then it's in this cute little bag and it says, We wish to express our thanks for making this day a happy one. I was going to put little cogs and gears on it, and then no. No, no, no. <laughs> no. So everybody gets one of these. That is coming. So the cupcakes got done. It was Tuesday, I believe. I spent the entire day just cupcaking. Just cupcake. I am never knitting another cupcake. Okay, I might, but not for like a year or something. I might have to. I don't know why I'd have to, but seriously, not doing it under unless it's under great duress for the rest of my life. Toy hiatus. Next little while, just saying. And then because I was like, oh my god, I finished cupcakes. I was going to gauge swatch and cast on the Aislin Aislin. Um, that I'm, I'm knitting along with Leslie, but, yeah. That was, I did not want to gauge swatch. I was just, I had I'd done too many little fiddly things, and I find gauge swatch is very fiddly, and I knew I have to, and I know I have to do one at this point, because I need to double check. Now, I'll cast on, knit for a little bit, check, and then rip everything out and cast on. That's fine. But I knew I wasn't doing that. In fact, I'll probably gauge watch tonight because she's probably ahead of me at this point and that can't happen. I can't be behind. It's like neurologically impossible. So I cast on and finished the second Chloe sweater, which is by Alana Dacos. It's a paid for pattern. It goes from three months to 10, size 10, I believe. Not sure. Double check the wrap pages, of course. So here's the second one that's finished. I knit these, um, and they're completely done. Like, ends woven in. I put the little buttony things on. Um, I did these for the Fat Squirrel Orange Cowl, and I need to put a picture in her thread, because... And here's the other one. In case you thought I was, like, snowing you with the first one, here's the second one. The only difference between the two, this one's the bigger one and it has an orange ruffle and orange ends on the sleeves. And the smaller one, which is for my smaller knees, has a green ruffle and green edges. They both have these little plastic green heart buttons that I had in my button bin. I still have like a million of them. I don't remember. I got them when I was a raver, so like they're super old. But they're cute and they match. These are like neon. <laughs> neon. Yeah. Neon. They are out of popcorn. Popcorn by Rosarios for something similar to that. Again, check the project page if you really give a damn about the yarn. 
it is a corn yarn so it will be very light and airy it's a super splitty yarn be forewarned super splitty these have not been blocked so they will grow a little not that they need to but they will uh that is also why the ruffles are not like they're all rolly because i haven't wet them down and gone that's my sound effect for you know what happens when you block either way they will work perfectly for my nieces and they will be at the wedding so i will give them to them then if they're being good if they're being bad auntie will say she forgot them at home because i'm mean i was talking to my sister-in-law on the phone just to double check everything and uh one of them was being really obstinate i'm like you tell her i will forget her presence i'm not above that and then she flossed her teeth like a good little girl because <laughs> I will forget the presents. Actually, I won't forget the presents. I'll just say I forgot them and give, and give them to uh, my brother and sister-in-law because I don't feel like paying to ship them. Having said that, there was super quickness. Like this one, this one, I cast it on like midnight. I finished it the next evening. This one's knit on a six, so it is a little tighter gauge because I found the six and a half to be very open, but the six and a half was fine too. Six and a half is a little more open. Whatever. Uh, I was just kind of winging it because the entirety of the popcorn is written in Spanish anyway. Uh, again, it was really deep stash, really old stash. Um, like two years, I think. And I wanted to participate in the Fat Squirrel Knit Along, so that's what I did. They're done. They're done. They're going in a bag. They're coming with us to Las Vegas, and they are not coming home with me. And I am glad that it made something useful. I like making useful things. <laughs> Just not for myself. <laughs> so, the, so I did that. Those are my two things that I did most of the week. Those are my finished objects. Look, at, I have finished objects. See, now that I'm done the Shell of Death, I, I have finished objects. And the Shell of Death has been blocked. Uh, I'm not digging it out to show you because folding it up after it was blocked was a bit of a trial. It is ready to be packed away. Of course, you can check my projects page to see it blocking. It is huge. It is the size of our spare room bed. And our spare room bed is a twin, I think. It's bigger than a twin bed. It is. Like, I can lay down and, like, stick my arm out and I'm touching the top and the bottom. It's massive. But it'll be gorgeous. And the beads, I, you know, I hated doing all those beads. At the end, I wanted to kill people. And I don't recommend crocheting on beads, that many beads. I prefer self stringy anyway. Crocheting on 5,000 beads? No. Never again. But it does really give a good weight to the end, which I liked. I also realized that I blocked it the, um, the bottom portions in a curve instead of in the point. And then I was like, you know what? I don't care. At this point, I can re-block it to a point if I really want. But I'm okay with the curve. I really am. I'm down with it. It's fine by me. So that was my, my thing. <laughs> Now, for works in progress, I have one. I have one. That's all I've really worked on. That's because last night, actually no, was it the night before, I was debating. I picked the yarn I'm going to use for the Aislin or Aislin or whatever the heck you want to call it. And uh, I was going to cake it. I will be using my Ruined Blue uh, Butternut Squash DK by Heather of Highland Handmaids. And I'm a little bit under in yardage. But that's okay because I'm shortening the sleeves and I'm shortening the body. So I think I should be fine. I'm not particularly worried. If I run out, I'm hooped. But at this point, like, I mean, I can shorten the sleeves even more. Because they're a three-quarter, I think. I think that's where it's said to be is a three-quarter. And I'm going to be at least up here. A lovely little fat turn. Actually, it's not that fat. I've got a little muscle. See? Ooh, look. Definition. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm sure you need to see that. But 
so I'm shortening the arms considerably and the body hits in the picture it hits like a little bit below the hip and I do not do that I'm not putting ribbing on my hips and Amy Herzog would completely understand so I'm bringing it up so that will also shorten the amount of yardage I need if all else fails I will poorly match it and then do the little strappy thingies the little tie strap thing yeah no I'm not worried kind of worried but I'm not worried I have enough yardage that I could do the size under me so I'm not yeah But I'm telling myself no big deal. I am probably going to gauge watch for that tonight. Because I'm a glutton for punishment. And really, I'm insane. I'm insane. And I'm like, I should cast on something to take for the wedding. Why? I have seven or eight projects on the needles. Do I really need to put another one on? No! I'm like, I should have vacation knitting. No, I don't need to, but I might start the sweater, and then I'll probably take some socks, because I have two pairs of those stripy socks, uh, both of my own blend. I have a pair of stripy socks from Briscotti and Chi that are sitting in the, they're behind me. They're like right there. Uh, that I haven't touched for a while, because of course I've been doing my own stripes, and I have the twisted flower socks, which might be a little too mentally taxing I don't know I don't know we're on a straight flight so there's like no waiting in the airport and, and we're gonna be so busy but it's like if I don't pack knitting I'm gonna lose my mind so I'm trying to think now the work in progress that I have actually been working on in my zigzag stitches sheepies bag sheepies of course, is the Mary Socks from the Lord of the Rings, uh, the Fellowship of the Socks, I believe, by Claire Ellen, who is Wimp Woman. She did all the Lord of the Rings socks. The knit along I'm doing, I do believe I gave us till the end of June, thank God, because quite frankly, my mind is blown. My mind is blown. And I want to do stripy socks in June with Diane of Knittables. Um, what's the other one? There's a super summer knit whatever knit together knit together that's what it is now uh the ssk knit alongs it's pick a knit girl any knit girl and i've been wanting to do georgia on my mind for a while and i know i have it in one of my pre-made bags so i really need to get some socks off the needles so i can do that um or maybe i should do making it work i don't know i am wedding brain leave me alone okay so i'm <laughs> knitting the merry socks uh, from Claire Allen Wimpleman out of Soft Like Kittens, the double helix sock base. This is her colorway weathered denim. It is a repeatable colorway. It is gorgeous shades of blues and grays. Um, I, I, I can't say enough about Annette. I really can't. And, uh, She's worth the shipping. It's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, approximately 100 grams, 400 yards. I think we use the same bases. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we do. So I did finish the first sock. Last time you saw it, I was uh, about to start the heel, the heel flap right here. So I did the heel flap. I did the gusset. I did the turn. I did the foot. So the first sock is completely done. I actually. It was like 2 in the morning. We were watching Toy Story 3 because we're lame like that. Uh, actually, I had never seen it, so we watched it. Um, and I finished in Kitchener like last night at 2 in the morning. So the sock is done. It's a gorgeous pattern. It's one of the less complex socks of the Fellowship of the Sock series. So if you're wanting to get your toe wet, it's a good one. Um... As is the Strider. The Strider is also... I wouldn't recommend starting with... I found Gimli to be very challenging. Um, I found Legolas to be very challenging. Um, Pippin was 50-50. Strider was easy. Easier. Um, he was less challenging. 
I suppose it, it depends on your subjectivity of easy, but, uh, see, Amy, there, I'm not calling it easy. I'm saying it was easy for me. It doesn't mean anyone else will find it easy. I've been knitting socks for way too long. Cookie A is starting to be normalized, and that uh, tells you where I'm at. I found it to be not so challenging. Uh, you do have a moving set of cables here. This cable does move, and then you've got this one and the side ones. However, it's all done in one chart, so you don't have to worry about chart A, B, C, uh, which you do with Gimli, I believe, has more than one chart going at the same time. So, for a less complex of the Lord of the Rings socks, try Mary. He's been good to me so far. So I finished the first sock, and I cast on the second sock. These are in US 1. I believe these are ones. These are either ones or ones and a, one and a half. They're 2.25 uh, millimeters. I am almost sure. And why does one look smaller than the other? No, these are the same. I think I have this problem every time because one's a darker shade than the other. Anywho, I have the ribbing almost done. I would like to get these finished. These may come, I don't know. They may come with me on the wedding, but I don't know. I may just bring the two pairs of stripy socks if they're not done by then. It'll all make sense eventually, right? So that's my work in progress. That's, that's my only work in progress. I am a bad person. Actually, no, I'm doing some spinning. I am not taking it off the wheel, though. The wheel's in the living room. It is with the wheel. It is a mixed BFL from Wool Gathering. It's in shades that I'm not used to doing. There's a yellow, a green, and a red. It's a very, almost like a color palette crossed with an autumn. Either way, I'm spinning it really thin because I want a Navajo ply it. This will be the first Navajo ply on the wheel, so I'm interested to see how it goes, what it does, what weight I get. I am just spinning uh, relatively, relatively uh, straightforward inchworming my way along. I default to the inchworm. It's where I'm comfortable. I do need to practice long draw. Oh well. Oh well. Right now it's all about keeping the stress levels low. That's what I'm doing. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. I've moved to Diet Coke. I have indeed. So I did receive <clears throat> I received three packages this week. The first package was my socks, which are awesome and wicked. And I didn't bring them in here, because I'm an idiot. But they need to be packed, so I'd much rather have them where they, where I know they'll, they'll get packed than in, in the, the, the spare room, where things kind of get sucked in. But, uh, yeah, they're gorgeous. I have my wedding socks. Yay! And I squeed, and I put them on, and I ran around the house, and I took pictures, because I'm lame. Uh... Also in the mail, I got this, which looks like a Ziploc bag. Sadie, why are you showing us a Ziploc bag? I am showing you a Ziploc bag. Um, Alinxia on Plurk sent me this. Something blue. How cute is that? And this is for the something old. It's crochet and knitting cotton. Bucilla, super mercenized wonder sheen, registered with the U.S. Patent Office. It doesn't tell you when it was made, but I'm assuming guaranteed boil proof. That's a new one. So there's the front. She sent me the, the thingy. Look at guaranteed boil proof. I don't, I don't know. I got nothing. And this gorgeous shawl gorgeous. Someone's going to have to wear this. I might have to I might have to trade out shawls halfway through. I don't know. I don't know. But this is gorgeous. It is a beaded shawl. Look at the detail on this. Just look at it. I squeed. I put it on. I danced around. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's got little iridescent beads in it that are clearly crocheted on because she has way way more patience than I do and it catches the light so beautifully it is a gorgeous shawl it is so beautiful so I got this 
this is something old she sent me something old for the wedding so thank you dear that is amazing it is completely amazing you all get right into your podcasters weddings don't you we're like soap operas for knitters but without all the intrigue I'm not sleeping with Victor Newman that dude is old and crazy my mother would so that is gorgeous that is gorgeous look at it again you can see the beads see the beads they just they're so barely there I believe they're silver lined they're gorgeous it's gorgeous it is friggin gorgeous friggin gorgeous So thank you, Alinxia. My mother has already claimed the blue flower pin. FYI, she will be wearing this. And it is insane. It's got little... Like, look at that. Look at the little leaves, man. There's no way I would have that kind of stamina and patience. Like, look at the little leaves. Oh my god. Show you the back there. Like... I'm sorry, I, I'm am amazed by this. I, I remain amazed. It is... And of course I made the partner in crime uh, marvel at it with me. There's much marveling. And then, because you can never have too many shawls, the most amazing and wonderful Knit a little sent me a shawl. Like, what is this? Let's keep Sadie warm? I I'm okay with that. We can keep me warm. I'm down with it. And it is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at it. Look at how gorgeous it is. And it is the perfect size for me. It is very much a Sadie size. Because this is how I usually rock the winter my winter rock but it is gorgeous it is gorgeous and I believe it's out of Patton's Croy I believe I believe I have some of this it's gorgeous seriously Michelle you're insane I love you you're insane and knit a little of course is of the fr three stitches podcast that she does with her daughters and they are moving and I am hoping that their move is safe and swift. I'm sorry. This is just too beautiful. Too beautiful. Too beautiful. And she sent a, a lovely card. And I damn near cried. FYI, damn near cried. I'm really bad at shawl folding. It's, it's not my most uh, skilly skill. I don't even know what to say. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Just look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Okay. <clears throat> I know. I know. I feel like such a total douchebag being like, look at all the stuff I got. But I did get a lot of stuff. And it's awesome. And I got a present from future mother-in-law. Because she it helps knit my bouquet, which is now felted. It's drying, and I'm going to wire it. I wired, like, five of the flowers last night. It does take a lot out of the hand. So I have maybe half a dozen left to go. A dozen? Ten? I don't know. I got a bunch more flowers to do, but she also sent me. Now this may not look like much. Oh, but it is. See, when I show you like that, it's not... You're just like, oh, whatever, Sadie. Piss off. This is Dripping Fiber Studio in Merino BFL Silk. It's 4.1 to 4.2 ounces in the Shire colorway. So, of course, you know, my little geek heart squeed. My little geek heart just went... Woot. So there are four of these gorgeous babies. I want to spin them right now, but I have to finish what I'm spinning. And just check this out. Just look at it. 
gorgeous teals. There's some frosty whites in there. There's some light greens. There you go. That's pretty true to color right there. It is gorgeous. Oh, look at how dark blue that looks. It is that dark blue, actually. It is beautiful. And uh, Partner in Crime is getting pretty damn sick of me making him squish stuff. I forgot my spindle. Um, I'll just tell you about it briefly then. Uh, I got a spindle, a Bosworth. Maybe you think, Sadie, you don't spindle spin. Well, I have in the past. But I do enjoy it. It's just that um, my spindle went walking away. And it never came home. It's with my hand carters, which never came home. Uh, sadly. Like, seriously, talk about losing stuff you like. Uh, if you follow Into the World, or if you follow um, the Journey wheel boards, then you know that there was uh, spindles that were made from live oak, I think it is. Uh, a live 19th century wood that was uh, taken out of the shipyards in Charleston, I believe. Anywho, Jonathan Bosworth, Bosworth dude, um, got this wood that is like as old as the USS Constitution from the Navy shipyard <coughs> and made spindles. He made the sh he made the shaft or no he made the actual spindle portion. Out of this wood, and the shaft is a bow coat, a boss cut, boss cut, boss cut. Either way, um, so it, it's a piece of history. It's a piece of naval history. It's partner in crime wanted one. I had entered <coughs> in the first lottery for the heavyweights, and I did not get in. But then there were some featherweights that were made, and I managed to snag one. So he got me the spindle. And then we uh, bantered back and forth because he wanted to put it in a shadow box because it's a piece of naval history. And I was like, no, it needs to be spun on, and I eventually won. I am spinning some nitty in color on it. I had like a little, you remember the little um, sample of fiber that I put in my bra and that went traipsing around with me out in the world? I'm spinning that on it, and it's spinning really nicely. It's less than 20 grams, 0.7 of an ounce, I believe it says. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous spindle, and it spins beautifully and magically, and I am really enjoying it. But however, I did not bring it to show you. I'll bring it in um, in two weeks. <laughs> Next time I record, I'll show you. But seriously, I had enough to talk about. I did not need to worry about it. The other thing I've been up to this week, aside from making little goodie bags, is this. I finished carding stuff for Kelly of Sheep Creamery, who sent me the, um, the churro that she felted. <laughs> oh, honey. Dyeing fiber is very different from dyeing, uh, yarn. And sometimes we learn that the hard way. So, I carded it together with some... Uh, Highland Handmaids that she'd sent. She sent some Highland Handmaids and HD Roses. And so I just lightly carded that together with the churro. The churro is very vibrantly pink with mixed spots of white. So that I gave the churro about three passes just to make it draftable. It's very soft now. It's very soft. I've got a lot of air in these. They are very beautiful. There's a whole baggie full of them and I'm going to package them up and they're in the navy bag. They'll probably trade out bags. I don't know if they'll fit. But, um, so those are going in the bag with the other stuff I did for her and all the little remnants and it's going back to its homeland. So she can spin it because she just got a new wheel. And that will make it easier to spin that stuff. I've already told you about the, uh, wedding next week. I put two shawls, holy crap, in my notes. See, two shawls, holy crap. I am awesome. Uh, awesome socks. Awesome socks. What are awesome socks? 
I put awesome socks in my notes and I don't know what awesome socks are. Putting stems and flowers I've talked about. I don't know what awesome socks are. That's what you get when you write your notes before you've had your coffee. I'm not even going to lie to you. Okay. So, I got this and I'm not going to give you a review. I'm going to give you a review next time because we're running a little long now. But this is one of the really cool clips from Katie's mom, who is Tix, T-I-X, Trinkets on Etsy. It's for holding shawls. I am going to wear a shawl and use this to close it. Oh, yeah. You know I am. Um, and I'm going to give it some, some wear in the next two weeks. And then I will give you a review. But they're beautiful. They're very beautiful. The shop opens in June, so... I'm going to wait until the shop opens to give you that full review so you can just run on over and purchase it. Uh, just heads up, I got one. <laughs> uh, I did want to tell you about these. Now we're into my shop, and I don't know what I should call my shop section. You know, Fat Squirrel calls it shameless self-promotion, 90% uh, knitting does something else. Everybody's got something. But I just wanted to talk a little bit, and it's not a process or anything. But this is, this is a Nambla. This is a, a version of Nambla. It is on the Batty Sock base. It has not been tagged yet. It has been wound. It's caked. It's ready to go. But uh, this is a screwed up sock. And I debated, and I discussed it with people, and decided that the screwed up socks are going to go into the shop. Unless they're really screwed up. This particular screwed up sock... What is a screwed up sock? What is a screwed up sock, Sadie? Well, I've got the regulars. Stuff that's going in the shop, full price, everything. They are they are what I consider 100%. They're ready to go. There's nothing wrong with them, according to me. Uh, there isn't anything wrong according to anybody. But the screwed up socks. The screwed up socks have a problem. Some socks have different problems. This one partic in particular, you can see, it has some flecking. Some flecking of white. Where the dye did not take. Now, there's a 75 to 85% chance that that won't actually touch your sock. Because the flecking is on the outer rim. However, it is enough that I would go, hmm, there's no way I can charge full price for this. So these are going to be discounted significantly. This is on the, if this is on the batty sock, the batty sock and the boogeyman sock are 26, no, $28. Skeleton sock is 26, batty sock, boogeyman sock are 28, and then tentacle face and clowns are 30. It's based on the amount of work it takes to do a stripey sock and the base price as well as everything else you factor in, but basically I'm, I'm, I'm breaking it down to the smallest possible denominator. Basically your price is determined by your base, aside from a bunch of other factors. So, <clears throat> and whether or not, like, I mean, if it has cashmere, I have to baby it more, blah, 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 blah. Uh, screwed up socks will be significantly reduced. So this is a screwed up sock. You can see the little screwed up flex. It's going to be some screwed up flex. It doesn't actually show up when you're knitting. I've screwed up some of my, my testings, like my little half socks, and they don't really show up when you're knitting them. Now, some I have put flex in on purpose. Some colorways have flecking on purpose. I will tell you if there's flecking on purpose. I just love saying flecking. It sounds so dirty. Uh, but if there's not flecking on purpose, like this one. This one has flecking, and it wasn't on purpose. It is in the baddie sock. So... That would be $28 normally. So I will be taking $5 off each skein. So instead of being $28, it will be $23. Instead of the $26 one, it will be $22. Or I mean $21. Instead of $30 sock, it will be $25. So if you don't really care about a little bit of flecking, or the fact that it might not even touch your sock, if you're knitting a small sock, it's going to be on the outer rim anyway, then screwed up socks may be for you. I'm leaving that up to you. If you if you want to buy stuff that may have a little issue, then you're more than welcome to. And this one also had a little bit of flecking. The fleck is just a little, there's two big flecks. That's about it. 
And there's cat fur. Why is there a cat fur? Oh no, that's not a cat fur. Nope. That is definitely roses in HD. Okay. So there's two little flecks. This is on the skeleton sock, so it's going to be a $21 gain. It's the fat bottom stripe. Each of these will be up for sale in the shop when the shop opens on June 4th at approximately 1 p.m. Minneapolis time. Now, screwed up socks will list what's wrong with them. Sometimes it's that the bleed went a little too far because there's bleed between the colors. Sometimes they match perfectly. Sometimes it's just a little too big for my bleeding like. So those ones will be discounted. But each screwed up sock will tell you what is wrong with it. And if you prefer to have a screwed up sock with a little bit of flecking, um, save yourself a little bit of cash and still have a wicked awesome self-striping yarn, be my guest. Be my guest. I'd buy it. See, I'm the kind of person who would. I'm the kind of person who would want that. And uh, I think that's why I'm offering them. They are not 100% quality, so they will have $5 off. Which is like, what, close to 20%? Somewhere around 20%? It depends. It depends on the base. But I just decided to say 5 bucks a piece, and um, there you have it. If they're really screwed up, like, um, sorry, like the pink ones, the pink ones that are my first set of socks that I'm knitting, and I actually left them in here. They haven't been work touched all week, which is kind of sucky because I'm really close to being almost done. If they are, like, if that bleed, that bleed would not be a screwed up sock that I would even put on sale. It's just, it just wouldn't happen. I would keep that one for myself. Uh, with a little bit of flecking that wasn't intentional, I'll just take some money off, and if you want it, you can have it. If they don't sell, I'll pull them out and keep them for myself. That's just how it'll work. This one didn't get any work done on it, but I'm really close to putting the flap in. Or the uh, afterthought heel. And the first week of the shop updates will be... What the heck did I do here? Hmm. The first week of shop updates will be the stripey socks. So you will have the Cthulhu, the Lovecraft <gasps> section selection. You will have the fat bottom stripes and you will have the explicit tag. Then you'll have the screwed up stripes. Those will all be going up on the 4th. The following week, which I believe is the 11th, will be the fiber. The fiber will go up, and that'll be all the Grave Robber, May, Blind Mag, Sunset on Gallifrey. I might do some more fibers. I'm not sure. I have four pounds that I can still die. As to custom orders, I'll take them as, as time allows. Uh, I could probably handle a couple each week. That's not a big deal. Um, it will be subjective to what bases I have. I will not dye something uh, like if I have a, if I have an MCN base in the shop in the color way you want. Get it. Uh, don't like ask me to dye it on skeleton sock if it's still in the shop. It's not going to happen. But, or on MCN sock, if it's in skeleton sock, i.e. what's there is there. I'm not going to die it on a different base. Because I may not have that base. Now, if I'm sold out, you get to pick whatever base it is based on what I have around. Because currently, right now, I only have clowns. I am getting more batty. And I need to get some more boogeyman and skeleton. But either way, I'm waiting for until the shop opens to do that. So, if I don't have the base in-house, you either have to wait until I get the base, or what have you. And I will have a set limit. Like, I might only do five one week and five the next week and what have you. The colorways, uh, the way they're set up is I will do a colorway theme It'll go away for a bit. It'll come back at some point, um, probably in six months or so. So Cthulhu, the Lovecraft set, it won't be making a reappearance for a little bit. But there are so many other cool sets that I have in my head that are being dyed up right now. I have two for the following week that are really cool and are going to be really popular. So, I mean, you can always hold out for the uh, next theme. 
I will repeat them, but it will be a bit of time between them. It's just how it goes. And there's too much cool stuff I want to do. Too much cool. Um, but I'll probably do a couple of custom orders each time. Each time. Not a lot, just a couple. Five, ten, ten maybe, tops. Because, um, yeah. It is a lot of time. It is a very time-consuming process. I enjoy it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. But I do understand why other dyers don't. I just, I get it. So. <clears throat> that brings us to music. What music <clears throat> should we have this week? I didn't actually pick any music. It's blank under music. Why don't you just, you know what, pick your favorite wedding song or love song. Not those cheesy ass songs though. None of that Brian Adams BS. I would die for you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm Canadian. I apologize for Brian Adams. I will apologize until I can apologize no more. Uh, so pick your own music. Relive some fond memories. Like Stairway to Heaven at the end of a school dance. I don't know. Pick something. Uh, I will not be here next week. I will be getting married. It is my birthday on Sunday, so it's like a double whammy. Next Sunday, it is my birthday. I will be turning 30, and I will be getting married. Woot! In Vegas. Okay. And I will be outfitted in knitwear like crazy. So, I won't be here next week. The week after, I will be here. I'll show you everything for the shop before it goes up. I'll show you my knitting. Hopefully I've gotten some done. I will show you my gauge watch. Hopefully I have one of those. I will show you everything and more. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. I really don't. I'm, I am I still got to get the house ready. Becca's watching the babies because she's awesome like that. And yeah. But... Until the end of May slash beginning of June, I wish you all happy knitting and spinning, and uh, see you later.